Thank you for joining and welcome to our session on file storage for high performance workloads. I'm Alon and I'm joined today by Jill from our Google Silicon team and will be presenting to you file usage for high performance workloads. Before I begin, a little bit about myself. My name is Dr. Alon Cohen. I'm a 15 year veteran of the enterprise storage industry and I recently joined Google through the acquisition of Elastifile. Elastifile developed the technology that is at the base of many of the new capabilities that we'll be presenting to you today. So let's dive right in. File storage essentially powers many high performance workloads in Google Cloud and throughout the industries whether it's rendering of the latest blockbuster movies, discovery in life sciences, including drug discovery for dealing with the latest pandemics, or any such industry such as silicon and EDA. But the truth of the matter is that file architectures are not a one-size-fits-all technology. Essentially, if you have a small workload, you can use a local file system that provides you access to one VM accessing that data. But as you grow your systems and want to share more data, shared file systems allow you to essentially connect multiple VMs or containers to a single file system through simplified interfaces and protocols such as NFS. But as your needs grow and as you need more and more compute power, it is not just enough to scale compute, you also need to scale the back-end file system to support those demanding workloads. And that's where you need scalable file systems, which also come in two flavors. Parallel file systems allow you to connect using plugins on the client side to multiple backend storage nodes, while scale out file systems essentially retain the simplicity of shared file systems, allowing you to connect through protocols such as NFS, while at the same time assuring that the storage at the back end can also scale and match the performance requirements of your front end systems. But moving HPC workloads to cloud is not just about performance. There is a collection of features that you require to easily migrate your workloads into the cloud. Beyond the high capacity and high performance, you want the elasticity to grow and shrink on demand to really benefit from what the cloud provides. You want to retain the simplicity of your local file system and the way you use your scale out file systems within your environments. You want to be able to provision on demand. You want to be able to integrate with cloud schedulers so that you do not need to manually manage the environment. And you want that file system to maintain natively all of the attributes of the file systems, such as locking, uh, that you used within your on-prem environment. That is the reason that we are excited to introduce to you File Store High Scale. File Store High Scale is a new tier of Google's File Store product that it essentially a managed elastic scale out file service that is designed to match the requirements of HPC and HTC workloads. With file store high scale, we are extending the capacities of the file store you're used to, to capacities of up to 320 terabytes, we are supporting a background scale-out architecture. We are allowing you now to both grow and shrink your environments for high-scale instances. 
and we expand the performance of file store to over 16 gigabytes per second or more than tenfold of our previous capabilities. In terms of IOPS, you can now reach hundreds of thousands of IOPS and even more so and more importantly for HPC environments, you can now uh, connect thousands of front end machines to the back end storage. With these new capabilities, essentially file store enables you to migrate your workloads into the cloud. You can now run all types of HPC workload with a native NFS file system inside the cloud, connect to it using either VMs or containers, and we'll even demonstrate to you shortly that you can use preemptible VMs and save considerable costs on your compute side storage. You can now support life sciences workloads, manufacturing, finance, and more. To demonstrate to you how such a file system is used in production, I'm going to turn it over to Jill to present to us how they use this technology for their EDA workload. Thank you, Alan. Hi, everybody. I'm Jill. I've been lucky to have been able to implement world-class networking CPU, GPUs, and mobile SOCs at different companies. I've also been into the software industry, supporting uh, enterprise and personal batch queuing software. And now for two and a half years, I've been at Google implementing world-class silicon. Our application, is, our needs are those of a typical HPC EDA customer. We rely on a lot of third-party commercial software that we assemble into flows, each one with hundreds of steps. Our users use a mix of interactive tool sessions and also batch workloads across thousands of machines. They share their data by using large data files that they want to share with their colleagues. And our application is not a web application. We cannot afford to lose a single job, otherwise it may hit the schedule up to two weeks, for example. Finally, we operate worldwide in multiple continents. Our initial assessment of Filestore in 2018 before we took that journey was it looked good that it was simple to instantiate. It was compatible with Terraform so we could use infrastructure as code. It was managed so we didn't have to spend time watching how is the machine performing. Somebody else was guaranteeing it that. We were using 20 terabyte machines and Filestore offered up to 64 terabytes, so that was great. And it also grows online, so we could start with small machine and add more capacity as needed. The problems we identified were, was the file system a server file system or a desktop file system? And in the end, it's managed, so we didn't care about those implementation details. The big one, which was initially uh, throttling us was there were no user or tree quotas. So how do we make this work? We decided to allocate one per user. And finally, we identified that it was just a nice to have to have the feature of reducing online. Our cloud architecture is based on using one cloud project per chip. Each user gets a virtual desktop into the cloud, which is basically a Red Hat 7 machine inside your web browser. Those can be quite large with 96 CPUs and two terabytes of RAM. All the design files are stored on the NFS file store server. We allocate at least one per user and we rely on auto mount to enable collaborations so that each person can see other users' files. And finally, we deploy the batch queuing system so that we can maximize license usage. And the machines in the farm auto mount the needed data from file stores. So how did it go? We started uh, back in 2017 with 50 gig machine. And file stores turned out to be easy, reliable, and scaled. We went in production with a better service. We started with a dozen file stores and we ended up growing way past our plans and expectations. 
So we have to say thanks to the cloud for delivering to us unlimited and instant capacity. We ended up reaching uh, close to 500 file store servers, totaling 4.2 petabyte capacity worldwide. And so despite having 500 file servers, it was easy to manage between Terraform and the management of file store. It was great. It was also very reliable. We never lost a single byte despite having 4.2 petabytes. We had a couple of incidents and they were mostly related to performance or temporarily unavailable data with for a few hours. The great thing that we discovered with file stores is you all know what is the typical sysadmin duty. A system administrator has to ensure that one user cannot bring down other users by abusing the systems. And so at other companies with a traditional file server appliance, I've personally experienced the overload of a file server when an HPC application deploys, deploys across thousands of cores. So it's very difficult to identify where the load is coming from. The NFS protocol has no quality of service built in. So Filestore gave us the IO quality of service we did not know we needed. It solved by construction that overload. There was no way a single user could impact the work of other users. And finally, performance. Filestore was able to provide enough IO and capacity for most of our application. Only the static timing sign-off, which runs across hundreds of corners, was too much for one file store. So we mitigated this performance bottleneck by manually sharding the rods across multiple file store per user. Now we are currently exploring file store high scale and our users are reporting that they are liking shared write, the fact that it can size higher than 64 terabyte and that some workloads are running way faster than uh, on a single file store. Now back to you, Alan. Thank you, Jill. So with that, we would like to actually demo the system to you and its new capabilities. We are going to simulate an HPC workload using a file store high scale instance. We're going to automate that using Slurm, and then we're going to spin up thousands of preemptible VMs connect them to the backend file store system and demonstrate to you some of the supported performance. The first step is of course, launching a file store instance. That is very simple, done through the cloud, the cloud console. And essentially it runs in a very similar way to the way you're used to launching file store instances so far but we added that capability of launching high scale instances, allowing you to launch them with up to 320 terabytes of storage in a single file systems. You can select the region and the zone where you want to launch. You can select the network that you want to use and even control access using certain IPs. You name your file share, let's do next 2020, and just press create. This is a fully managed system, so the scale out file system is being launched for us at the back end. And once it's ready, we simply have an IP that we can start mounting clients to. We'll do that now with Slurm for orchestration launching thousands of preemptible VMs. Back in Cloud Console, we can see that those VMs are launching. And at the same time, Slurm is now initiating jobs within each of those clients. And those jobs connect to the file store high scale instance at the back end. These are all preemptible VMs. So Slurm can launch them while saving over 80% of the costs in terms of the compute for the systems that you are using. At the top portion of this screen, you see the number of connections and the throughput that is being generated by these workloads 
as they run these jobs. You can see that we are now already at about 2,000 connections to our backend file store high scale instance. And you can also see that our throughput is reaching 25 gigabytes per second, allowing all of these clients to run in parallel. Now, because these clients are running on preemptable VMs, it may occur, and at this number, it definitely does occur, that some of these VMs will actually be preempted. But that is not an issue for this architecture because our orchestration system will essentially just spin up these VMs again to complete the jobs that they were running. All of the data is persisted in file store high scale at the back end so the data is not lost, even though our VM has been preempted. So as you can see now, Slurm is relaunching VMs and making sure that our whole job process has completed. And that is the tail of completion that you see at the back of this run. So what we, we demonstrate here Essentially, we launched a 320 terabyte scale out file system at the back end with a series of clicks from Cloud Console. We made sure that we can run preemptable VMs and launched, in this case, 2000 preemptable VMs against this single scale out file system. There is no overhead because with this orchestration, you can essentially launch the VMs when you need them. And when they're no longer needed, you simply spin them down. Everything is persistent on the file system. And even the file system itself, you can scale up and scale down on demand per your needs. We connected thousands of VMs in parallel. We showed over, well over actually 16 gigabytes per second of throughput. And we completed 100% of our processing and all of the data was persisted in our backend file system. If you would like to learn more about file store and its new capabilities, you can check them out in the links provided in this slide. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So we welcome you to go to Cloud Console launch a file store high scale instance and test your own workloads to see the performance that you achieve. With that, I'd like to thank Jill again for joining me. Thank you all for being here. And we look forward to receiving your questions and getting your feedback on usage of the system. Thank you.